Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean video today. Today gonna go out today see what things came out, see what things on sale today. Today though, the big release that comes out is the Joker. And with that one, I know there's a number of uh, different retail exclusives of that. Um, I know Target has an exclusive one that has like a different cover on the um, Blu-ray, as well as um, Walmart. I don't know if Walmart has an exclusive, but I know Best Buy has the exclusive Steelbook, and I feel like that's gonna be one of those Steelbooks that sells out really, really fast. So we shall see if there's any more, you know, left. Also though, the film uh, The Lighthouse releases as well as the shed also though, at the end of this video is gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD blurry and 4k reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video and as always too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs blurries and 4k's that I reviewed what you guys thought of the films if you guys have seen them also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into Walmart we go and also today though, since the first Tuesday of the month, Walmart changes out their actual section and gets in a whole bunch of, you know, brand new indie horror films and comedies and all kinds of different stuff. They always change them out in the first Tuesday of the month. So fingers crossed they have everything changed out. Sometimes they don't, but we shall see though. I'm definitely hoping they've got all the stuff out though. Like I said, we shall see. But in here today, like I was saying, the big thing that came out was the Joker. And with that one, the uh, 4K of that one is uh, $29.96 for that one. And the standard edition uh, Blu-ray DVD combo, that one is uh, $24.96 for that one. And then the DVD is $16.96. It's cool how they all have different covers. And like I said, Target is going to have one with a different cover as well. And sometimes, too, with the DVDs, Target has different covers. And sometimes theirs have, like, more features, I've noticed. Because this one has on here just one feature. So we'll see if Target has a different. Uh, cover on that but like, I, I really like the cover on the on the uh, blu-ray here other than that though on the front here I don't see anything else here so I don't know if they didn't put some of the stuff out or not so I'm not sure if they're gonna have the lighthouse here or not sometimes though they put the stuff in the section now oh, no the lighthouse is now here on the side like I was saying they they've kind of changed around the way they display the movie so they do have the lighthouse here on um, blu-ray and that one's a uh, 1796 for the blu-ray uh, 1296 for the DVD and then this released uh, last week this was like the only thing that released last week the Nicolas Cage movie Primal other than that here uh, they also have uh, Paradise Hills which is one I really love this movie this is a really cool movie starring Emma Roberts about going to this weird Emma Roberts character like is about to get married to this guy that she doesn't want to marry and she has to go to this weird type of like um, finishing school for girls kind of thing but there's like some weird things going on there it's a really really out there movie but and it stars uh, you know uh, Emma Roberts and uh, Aquafina and Danielle McDonald from the movie Patty Cakes if you guys have never seen Patty Cakes that was a really really great movie as well but really cool movie here uh, let's see though over here in the section and hopefully they have everything else new out over here let's see 4k wise I don't see anything new here 4k so let's see like I said they kind of changed the way they put stuff so over here is where they usually have some more of the new things and I do see some of the new stuff like um, this one here uh, a cycles path uh, this one released today this is um you know these ones are from ITN uh, films cycles pass um, this one here from um, life from this one came out a little while ago I believe but now it's you know the Walmart it's stocked in Walmart and that one's on uh, 996 it's another one today this one called dark light so I do not know anything about this one if you guys have watched this one let me know how this one was they also have this movie called um, the mercenary it's another one I have not heard anything about this one uh, and that one's 996 as well as well as uh, savage creatures is 996 uh, this one is a shutter exclusive called the night shifter this one released here today and other than that though I believe all this stuff down here was from the past month and I think let's see down here which ones of these are new um, the huntress I think this one might be new and that one's 996 as well as uh, King a kingdom of swords uh, was 996 burning the dolphin 2 I don't know if this was this week or like a couple weeks back I can't remember for sure on that as well as uh, mermaid down for 996 this one released today uh, like I said a lot of stuff today uh, the shed which I'm gonna be talking about this at the end of this video I really like this movie this movie kind of has like a um, fright night kind of vibe to this one also, though, um, movie here uh, for 996 as well, The Dark Encounter. So I talked about this one in my video last Tuesday. If you didn't see that one, I reviewed that one last Tuesday, and that's 996 as well, as well as uh, My Nine. This is another one I'll be talking about at the end of this video. That's 996 as well as um, Love Alaska. That one came out today. Let's see if there's any other ones 
mixed in new that I see here. I think this might be new, this Rebel Born. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this might be a new one as well. Let's see anything else over here. Doesn't look like I see anything else new here TV-wise or anything. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, there's definitely a bunch of new stuff that came out today. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the main things I'm seeing here today. Into Target we go. Also, guys, if you didn't see it yet, check out the link below to find out about the film Compatible. It's an upcoming horror film, which I'm going to be acting in. And um, it has a, you know, Kickstarter for the movie where you guys can, like, pre-order uh, the DVD. It has a whole bunch of other perks as well. Should be a really cool horror film. Done the style of, like, um, Searching and Unfriended. You know, that's the way the film is uh, done in that style. But like I said, definitely check out the link below. There's, I think there's, like, seven days left if you guys are interested in helping out the project. But anyway, though, guys, like I said, check out the link below to find out more about the the film compatible. And in here though, they do have out the exclusive Joker. They still have some of the ones left here. This has exclusive artwork on this one. And I checked underneath, it's not just on the slipcover here, it's actually, uh, you know, the same image underneath as well. And this one here is uh, $24.99, but I really like the image on that one. And then the standard edition here is $24.99, and then the uh, 4K is uh, $29.99. And like I was saying, they do have a different cover on the uh, DVD here. I was thinking that they would, and this one has on here more features than the one in Walmart. The Walmart one only had one feature. This one has a, a bonus disc with the features on that one. Other than that, here in the front though, I don't see anything else new here in the front. I'll check in the section though to see if they have like Lighthouse and stuff like that. I feel like they should have it over there, but we shall see though. But like I said, definitely some really cool additions though today of Joker. And like I said, it's cool that they all have different covers. But over though in the actual section though, they did have the lighthouse over there. They had the DVD and the Blu-ray for that. They also had the film Mine 9 as well. They had that on um, DVD as well as season two of Big Little Lies. That was one of the other things they released today. They also had a collection that included you know, both the first and second season together as well. And this past week, another movie that I saw in theaters was The Grudge Remake, which well, technically the second remake because there was the one before with Sarah Michelle Gellar, and this is the newest, like, reboot one. And the reviews for this one have been really mixed and stuff. And I, I have to be honest, though, I didn't absolutely love the movie at all. Like, there there was some aspects of it that were okay. Like, Lynn Shay, I thought Lynn Shay was great in the movie. Lynn Shay's always good and everything, but I thought she was really, really good in the film. But, like, the way the story was told, it was kind of like, it cut back and forth in, in different time periods, but in, like, kind of a weird way. The movie, though, was basically, though, about this house that was cursed because someone died there, and, like, the curse was remaining in this house, and anyone that got there was, like, died there as well from this curse, and it was dealing with this this woman who was a cop who was investigating this this woman that was found dead in her car out in the middle of the woods and it linked back to the house and you come to find out exactly how she was connected to the house and then it cuts to like uh, you know um, John Cho's character who's like a realtor trying to sell the house and his problems with the house so it basically just kind of cuts back and forth but the movie though really didn't have much creepiness to it like I, I felt like even the Sarah Michelle Gellar one had some creepy aspects to it and like these creepy images and visuals that the movie were kind of known for the series of the grudge films were known for and this one didn't have a lot of that this one kind of like was really missing some of those kind of images and I don't know like I just all around though I just didn't think like the way the story went was that great if you guys saw the movie though let me know in the comments below though what you guys thought of it or what you guys saw uh, this past weekend if you guys got to check out anything new in the theaters into Best Buy we go but in here, though, they have a standee out here for the Joker, but there's none of the uh, steelbooks left. And I looked in the front as well. They had, a, like, spots for them, but none of them were left either. But if they did have it, it would be $34.99. But I had a feeling it was going to be one of those ones that went really, really quick, and it was a 4K steelbook as well. The standard 4K, though, is $29.99 here, and then the standard um, Blu-ray, that one is uh, $24.99. Also, though, over here, though, on the actual section, there was a couple other things over here I saw. Um, like, they had this Larry Fest new movie here called The Depraved. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. I've not heard a lot about it. Uh, they also have a spot for it, but they don't have any, so I don't know if they, put, if they sold out or they didn't put them out yet. This one here called Trespassers. I looked for that at uh, Walmart as well and didn't see it. If you guys have seen that one too, let me know how that one was. Other than that though, uh, they have Big Little Lies, the complete second season here, and that one's uh, $22.99 for that one. But I don't see any of the lighthouse here. I didn't see any in the front either. I'll check again, but it 
it, maybe they didn't put it out yet, but I have. I, it doesn't look like they have it unless, like, like I said, it wasn't put out yet. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the main stuff. I think one of the only other things that might have been today was a uh, Crown Vic here, and that one's a $14.99 for that one. Yeah, but I checked again in the front and I didn't see any copies of the lighthouse in there. Like I said, I didn't know if it's one of those things where they had it and they didn't put it out yet or one of those kind of things. But if you guys saw a lighthouse in uh, Best Buy in your location, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know in the comments below what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K if you guys picked up anything today. And also, if you guys picked up the Joker, uh, which edition did you end up getting for that one? Because like I said, there was definitely a lot of different ones, a lot of different covers on them. But anyway though, guys, like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out the link uh, below for the film um, Compatible to find out more about that film. And also too, uh, let me know in the comments below uh, you know, what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed at the end of this video, what you guys thought of them, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Warner Brothers. They sent out a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this one is available. It's the 4K Ultra HD edition, which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital copy of The Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Robert De Niro, directed by uh, Todd Phillips. I thought, though, Joaquin Phoenix did an amazing job in this movie, and he actually just won the Golden Globe for, you know, best actor in this film, and I totally agree with him winning. Like I said, I thought he did such a great job in this movie. The movie also won for best score. Really great music in this movie. The thing about, I like about this movie too is it has the vibe to Taxi Driver. It has that total feel to this, the way that it's, you know, the story goes, set in New York City as well, around the same time period as Taxi Driver. It has that total feel to this. And it's, you know, the origin story to the Joker, and it's essentially, though, about, you know, Joaquin Phoenix's character, you know, and it's about him, you know, he works as this clown, like, it's like, a, kind of like a company where it's all different kind of clowns, and people go, like, work there if they need to hire, like, a clown for, like, a birthday party or an event and that kind of stuff, that's, you know, where he works, and that's what he does to make a living, but he, what he really, really wants to do is stand-up comedy, but he doesn't really, like, have a whole lot of confidence, and, like, he goes to, like, try and do it, and he's getting, like, laughed at, and and he also has to, you know, he's taking care of his mother who's sick and he's like, it's kind of like, um, it's the movie's all about him getting like getting broken down more and more as it goes along and it's just kind of like you know things just start getting worse and worse for him it's just kind of about him just pretty much like losing it little by little as the film goes along and like I said the performance in here is absolutely amazing it is like it was such this movie was so well done I also had this movie as one of my picks for the best movies of you know of the of 2019 and like I said all around this movie was a really really great movie a uh, four Okay, wise too. This movie, you know, it's a very, very gritty the way it's shot. Like the the whole look of the film looks absolutely amazing on 4K. So if you guys have 4K capacities, you know, um, you know, definitely would recommend the 4K version of the film. And the one thing you always notice with 4K as well, as I've talked about in the past, is all around, too, it's a much, much brighter picture. I feel like it's a much more vibrant colors and everything, and it also has a whole lot more with the HDR, with, with the contrast levels. It's much, much deeper darks, and the whole contrast all around just really is, you know, boosted with the uh, HDR. But like I said, would definitely recommend you guys check out this movie if you guys have not seen this one yet. On here, though, it has a making of on here, as well as one cool feature was it was showing, like, um, the alternate takes of Joaquin Phoenix's character when, when he was for one of the scenes and showing like how differently he would do the scene every time it wasn't the same way he would do it like the way he would change things around it'd be 100% different it was a really interesting thing to see on here but like I said would definitely recommend you guys check this one out if you guys have not seen it and the next one here is from Warner Brothers as well they sent out our free copy of this one let you guys know that this one is available and this is the, uh, the complete second season here of the HBO series uh, Big Little Lies here on DVD now I have not seen all the episodes of the first season Essentially, though, it was about, like, all these women who, you know, were somewhat friends, and some of them had, like, disagreements with each other, and it was basically dealing with all of their kids who went to school together, and it was kind of about, like, their relationships and their family life and the ups and downs and all that kind of stuff, but it also dealt with this mystery of someone that had died, and uh, the second season, though, explores more into that, and uh, Meryl Streep's character comes into this one uh, as, like, the mother of the one that had died, and it's kind of like there's a lot of 
mystery behind this, like I said, to this death. And it's kind of like, it goes more into that with this uh, series. And the, the show stars, you know, Nicole Kidman, uh, Reese Witherspoon, Shailene Woodry, uh, Laura Dern, Zoe Kravitz, like I said, uh, Meryl, Meryl Streep. But like a really, really well put together series, really, really well acted. On here though, this has uh, the lies revealed, a conversation with the cast of Big Little Lies on this one. The next one here is from Lionsgate, and it's a movie here called uh, Line of Duty, which stars Aaron Eckhart. And this one is an interesting movie. It was, it was basically, though, about uh, Aaron Eckhart's character who is go going after this guy who, like, the because um, he's a cop, he's going after this guy, but he a ends up accidentally, you know, because the guy pulls a gun on him and he ends up killing him. And uh, he ends up getting, like, his, like, um, the chief, the police chief is, like, saying, I, why did you do that? We were, you know, you weren't, you know, that was the one guy that we needed because his, the chief's daughter, well, you know, the captain's daughter was, you know, kidnapped. And this guy who they were going after and, and, and Aaron Eckhart's character killed is the only person who knew where, you know, his daughter was and was being held. And, like, and you know, the daughter's, like, trapped in this in this box thing. And it's essentially, though, about Aaron Eckhart's character, like, getting, like, relieved of duty for doing this. And he's, like, well, he, he's, like, determined to find where she is and figure out exactly who was behind all this because there was more people, you know, the, the behind this thing than this guy so it's essentially though him going on you know to try and track you know uh the daughter down and figure out where she's being held and all this kind of stuff and it's this one girl though who um with her friend has like a um kind of like a live streaming show which is really popular and you know she's around in the area so she ends up going and finding Aaron Eckhart in the beginning of this movie when he you know and um, she noticed something's going on and so she basically is coming along with him in the squad car and like on his like drive and everything uh, you know when like I said too he was relieved of duty so he's not supposed to be doing this but he's, he's determined to find her so she's live streaming the whole thing at different moments while everyone's watching it's like getting broadcast on the internet getting broadcast on the news and it's a really interesting way the movie was told and the story wise and everything Thing. On here, though, this has a commentary track on here with Stephen C. Miller, as well as a making of featurette on this one. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well. And this one was cool because uh, Pauly Shore does one of the voices in here, which I thought was one of the main voices. I thought it was really cool to see him doing an animated film. It's a movie here called uh, The Big Trip, and it stars, like I said, Pauly Shore as well as Drake Bell. And this is basically, though, about like this... Um, this bear and this um was that was it a bear and a rabbit? I think it was a bear and a rabbit. I can't remember if it was a bear. I believe if it was a bear and a rabbit out in the woods, and they end up discovering this panda that was like um like you see like these storks like drop this panda off, and they drop this panda off at like the wrong place. So it's basically like um about them going on this journey to try and get the panda back to the panda's parents. So it's kind of like them going through like um, all these, kind of coming across different characters along the way and all kind of like, you know, on their journey and everything. It's a really fun movie. It's more, definitely more for kids and everything. But I thought, like I said, it was really cool to hear Pauly Shore in here doing the voice. And on here though, it has a uh, featurette on here, you know, in the recording studio. And so it has like them recording, you know, uh, Pauly Shore and Drake Bell's part and stuff in this movie also has on here our trailer gallery uh, the next one here is from um, from Disney, and this is um, you know Maleficent, uh, Mistress of Evil, which is the second film, you know second Maleficent film. Was so I actually really really liked the first Maleficent that came out a, a number of years back, and this movie takes place five years after the first film. And you know in, in the first movie, Maleficent was a character was bad, and it's basically though now she's not bad anymore. She's trying to be good, and like you know her her niece is played by you know. Um, Elle Fanning is planning on getting married to this prince, and it's kind of like, um, you know, Maleficent, though, is, is always around, you know, watching and everything, you know, um, Elle Fanning's character, and she's, they end up having, like, the, um, you know, Elle Fanning's character is going to, like, the wedding reception party for her future husband, and Maleficent comes along, and it's kind of this awkward thing, because, like, um, her future husband's, like, parents don't really like Maleficent because they know like the bad things that she did in the past and they don't trust her and basically though something ends up happening there Maleficent ends up having to run off but it ends up being like um <coughs> like a bad thing going on because like well you can't really say too much but essentially though it's like um you know um you know, Michelle Pfeiffer's character is like, and you find this out in the very beginning, like there's something up with her and she's like planning something, the whole thing going on. But it's basically though like a, um, 
Maleficent's character kind of trying to be stay good and then also trying to make sure that this wedding doesn't you know not happen because of her and because of her it's it's kind of hard to explain but I thought it was a, definitely an interesting sequel here I thought it was a fun movie though if you guys like the first Maleficent though I would say this one is still totally worth checking out on here though this has a bunch of different features it has uh, extended scenes it has outtakes has behind the scenes look at the magic listen um, Mr. Evil as well as a number of other featurettes as well on this one and the next one I got here is from Paramount and this is the 4k Ultra HD edition here of Gemini Man which includes the 4k the blu-ray and the digital copy of the movie this movie though I thought this was a really really fun movie this is like a fun I, I thought it's a really cool concept for a movie as well it's basically though about Will Smith's character who is this hitman who's retired because he's gotten older and he's done this his whole life and he's really just can't can't do it anymore he doesn't feel like he's as sharp as he once was so he's basically getting out of this whole the whole business and he's retired from the whole thing he's like um and you see Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character. She's there kind of to watch over him, kind of like um, to make sure he doesn't do anything. You know, now that he's retired or like talk to anybody or tell anybody anything or tell anybody any secrets that he knows or anything like that. But essentially, though, someone is coming after Will Smith. Is Someone sent someone to come after Will Smith to take him out and to kill him. And it's basically, it's a young version of himself. It's a young clone of himself coming after him. And Will Smith's like, no, realizing like that this, guy whoever this is is coming after him you know knows like all is like a step ahead of him and knows like exactly the way he does things knows the way that he would hide and all these kind of stuff so he's basically since it's a clone of himself he's coming after him the whole time and he's like one step ahead and it's basically though about will smith's character trying to get away from him at the same time he's trying to figure out exactly who was it that sent somebody after him? Because he's kind of think, thinking like, what did I do? I, I didn't say anything. I'm just retired now. You know, who, why is this, you know, uh, this young clone of myself coming after me and trying to kill me? And like, and it's like a, like I say, it's a crazy action movie with all these different crazy sequences and everything. And I really thought it was cool the way they did like the de-aging on Will Smith. I thought they did a really, really good job on that. On here though, on the 4K, it has an exclusive feature, which it has a visual effects breakdown. And then on the Blu-ray, it has an alternate opening, deleted scenes. So lots and lots of, uh, features on this one like i said a really really fun movie and 4k wise too this movie looks great on 4k so if you guys have 4k would definitely recommend uh the 4k version of the movie the next one here this is really cool that these one that the sequels are now available and it also the first film has brand new features and this is uh the beverly kill uh, beverly hills cop trilogy here which is the three movie collection now the second movies i don't believe you know the second and third movies i do not believe those ones have ever had a uh, blu release in the U.S., so it's really cool that those ones are now on Blu-ray. But on here, though, on the um, the um, on the first film, it's the 35th anniversary edition, which includes on here brand new content. It has uh, deleted scenes, behind the scenes, 1984 interviews, has a BHX mix mixtape. It also has the original features from the Blu-ray as well, like the commentary track with the director, a bunch of different featurettes on here on the you know the casting and the location, that kind of stuff. But um, I'm really, like I said, really glad that the sequels now are available on Blu-ray and really cool too the first movie has brand new features I always really liked the third movie because it was set at a uh, you know amusement park was like one of the big locations of it and I thought it was that, that one I really really liked a lot and you know this movie is basically about you know um, Eddie Murphy's character as this cop and it's kind of about him in the first one though he's trying to track down this um, person who killed his best friend and like I said the third one though takes place you know dealing with like uh, at a theme park and I, I know I really like that like I said these are really really fun movies and also each movie too for if you guys are wondering has their own disc so it's the first movie second movie and the third movie and they all have their own discs here like i said one of you guys know that this one was available now uh from um from uh, paramount the next one here is from rlj uh entertainment this is a really cool movie here called the shed and i really like this this is basically though the beginning of this movie you see frank whaley's uh character kind of running away from somebody who's like chasing after him and you know frank whaley has been in lots and lots of movies i always think of him from like career opportunities and then uh little monsters he plays like boy and little monsters i th those are like the ones of his i always think of but he was in lots and lots of really cool stuff like um vacancy and um Swing with Sharks and lots of great movies. And this is basically, though, about, like, like I said, in the beginning of this movie, you see him running away from somebody. He ends up getting bit by this vampire out in the woods. And um, he ends up going and, you know, basically realizing that he's, like, been bit. And he starts, like, you know, the sun starts reenacting, you know, uh, burning him and everything. So he tries to figure out where to run away and hide to get out of the sun. And he ends up running into this shed. And it's the shed, you know, where this kid lives with his grandfather. 
And his grandfather is this guy who's like really mean to him and like drinking all the time and everything. And basically, though, uh, you know, this kid at school, too, he, he's basically is he gets bullied by these people, uh, you know, and because he likes this one girl and, you know, his, and his girlfriend and that basically the, the bully, uh, you know, used to date her. And he's like coming after, you know, kind of picking on him because of this and essentially though this kid you know goes out there and finds out that there's somebody out in the shed and it's basically you know kind of about him you know trying to figure out like um you know what is this thing in the shed because he, like, he has to board it in there and also is he going to lead people to the shed like his bullies and that kind of thing it's kind of like one of those things where you you, you know you're going is this going to be kind of like um the movie the pit which was about like this kid who found a hole in the ground and like he's pushed bullies and stuff like that into this it kind of reminded me of that a little bit it had that kind of vibe also has a serious vibe to fright night like it has a total fright night vibe because um the one friend he has this one friend who he who gets picked on as well and he kind of reminds me of like of evil ed from fright night a little bit like the their their friendship and everything but i i honestly thought this was a really cool uh different take on a vampire movie and i like the idea of the vampire was like hiding in the shed and like he couldn't leave and and he had that he was boarding him up in there and it's, it's a, a really cool film all around but definitely recommend you guys check this out uh the next one here is from uh, mill creek this is a really cool collection here and this is exclusively from couch potato but this is um the mill creek collection here of um, the king of queens the complete series here on blu-ray so really cool that they've released this show on blu-ray like i said it's an exclusive from couch potato and this has on here though feature wise it has the pilot episode with the commentary with kevin james and show creator on this one it has a last montage it has a 200 episode celebration it has behind the scenes featurette a series re retrospective thanks to the fans featurette on here but in here though it has all um 207 episodes here and they're all in widescreen and it has for all of the uh, seasons of the show the show went for um i can't remember how many seasons it was i believe it was it went for um, let me see. So seasons, this one through the last one, one through 20, that is, uh, season nine. So yeah, it went for nine seasons here. And I'll show you guys a look though inside. Uh, this one has discs one through 10 here, and this has discs uh, 11 through 20. And then on the back, it has like, um, pictures from the show and everything like that on here. But this is a really fun show about Kevin Smith's character and his wife and his wife's father. They, they all live together. And it's kind of about like their kind of dramas of work, of living together and just kind of all the kind of like, you know, ups and downs of their of their you know um Kevin Smith's character you know Kevin James character and his wife and just kind of like all the things they go through. This is a show that I've I've watched many episodes of this throughout the years. I've not seen all of them though, but I've seen a number of them. But here's a look though inside here at the discs. But like I said, this one, like guys, this one was available because it came out like um, a couple weeks back on DVD, and I had heard about a Blu-ray. So really glad to hear this one has gotten a uh, Blu-ray release here. Like I said, this is from Mill Creek, and it's exclusively from uh, Couch Potato. The next one here i have a link where you guys can order this one for the best price but this is from movie zing it's also a um a um what was the other the company on here i'll put a link though for the company i think it's i believe it's gunpowder and sky i believe i'm not 100 sure but i'll put a link below though uh for it and it's a movie here which stars bill skarsgård and mia mika monroe micah monroe and it's a movie here called villains which i really like this movie a lot like i saw the trailer for this one um you know a little while back and i i missed seeing this one in theaters and i i i I really wish I did because this is a really really cool movie and it also stars uh, Kira Sedwick and it's basically though about Mika uh, Monroe's character and Bill Skarsgård are a couple who kind of go around and they like steal things and that's kind of what they do like and they end up robbing this place and they end up in their car ends up breaking down out in the kind of close to where they were, they were just robbed and they kind of are like well, what are we going to do we, the car broke down we got to get out of here you know the people are going to be looking for this car and they end up wandering into this house and they and they first they think it's like an abandoned house or there's nobody around and it ends up being like these this this weird uh couple in there played by Kara Sedwick and Je uh, Jeffrey Donovan and it's basically though uh you know they come to find out it's kind of like this it's sort of their characters are somewhat kind of like uh in the movie Parents kind of like that you know Randy Quaid's character and 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 his wife's character in Parents mixed with like um 
uh, people under the stairs somewhat. It has that, that kind of vibe because there's something really off about them. And essentially, though, they end up, you know, trapping them in there and keeping, held, you know, holding them in this house. And you find out more and more that there's like something really up with them. And they, and they have like their daughter in the basement. It's like a really, like, like I said, it's like this becomes this nightmare of a situation. And it's a really, really cool movie. Like I said, I would really recommend you guys check this out. If you guys have seen this one, let me know what you guys thought. But it has on here a director's commentary track as well as uh, deleted scenes on this one. The next one here is from uh, Magnet, releasing it. It's a movie called, a documentary called Wrinkles the Clown. And I thought this was a really cool documentary. I really got into this one. It's a really creepy clown. And it's like, um, it's basically though a documentary on this clown that is, um, it basically became viral on the internet and got picture got spread around everywhere where it was like you could call this phone number that was posted and if people called it, you know, this clown might come to basically scare kids. So like if parents had like kids that were being misbehaving or causing all kinds of problems and everything, they, they could call this number and um, or threaten the kids with this, this number that, you know, wrinkles the clown is going to come for them. And like, and, and there's like um, these videos of like wrinkles the clown, like scare people and stuff that are online and everything this is a documentary all about the whole thing and about like the guy behind this and kind of about like the weirdness of the fact of like threatening kids with this character and it shows like too how many calls this guy gets and it's a really interesting documentary and the guy talks like this he's like hey I'm, I'm Winkles the Clown how you doing yeah Winkles yeah my name's Winkles the Clown it's a, it's really interesting. I, I don't know. This is one of those documentaries. And one of these things, too, I feel like I'll remember this thing forever. Because it's just like a really interesting thing. And it was like a crazy, like, uh, the whole thing about it. I, I thought this was really, really well put together as well. But if you guys have seen this one as well, let me know what you guys thought of this one. And the next one I got here is from Alliance Films. It's a movie here called Mine 9. This movie is basically, though, about a group of these miners that work in this mine where it's like, um, you know, a, a deep down coal mine where they're having a lot of problems, though. They're having problems with um, funding. They don't have like a foreman there watching over the place while they're all down there. Uh, they don't have enough employees. And basically though, the big problem is they have two major things going wrong down there. They have all this methane gas leaking into the mine. It's like full of gas. It's extremely dangerous. They're constantly like worried about having to like put up these tarps to try and control the gas and worried about explosions. They're also the pump that pumps out the water that kind of is flooding into the mine. The pump is like about to break. It's having all kind of problems. At the same at the same time, though, uh, they don't really want to tell you know corporate or anything about this too much because they know if they tell them, there's a really good chance the mine, because of all this gas and the dangerousness of it, will be fully closed down, and then everyone will be out of work and they won't be able to work or know what to do or anything. But they all in an agreement that they're going to continue working because they really need the money and they can't risk losing their jobs. And essentially, though, something ends up happening down there with like the gas and then like the leaking and like, like I said it's things go really bad and they find themselves trapped down there with like really like I think it's like an hour of, of air left or something like that and it's basically them trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do it's a really really tense movie really really well shot as well like the like the whole look of this movie like the, the, the this, it has this really super gritty look and I thought it was and also really great footage of like the mine and kind of like showing the whole like process of how things are done and everything I don't know I thought this it's actually a really, really interesting movie here. And it has on here deleted scenes and a director's commentary track. And the last one here is one I was really excited to let you guys know is available. And this is from a company called uh, Eight Films. This is a German media book for a movie called Hashtag Funny Face. It's directed by Marcel Waltz, who directed uh, the Blood Feast remake. The reason I was excited to let you guys know about this one, though, is I actually act in this movie. I mean, like, the last, like, five minutes or so of the film. But uh, keep in mind, though, this movie is all in German. Uh, there's no, you know, English subtitles on this one. So everything's in German except for my stuff at the end. That's the only stuff that's in English in this movie. So definitely keep that in mind with this one. Also, though, for those wondering, though, it's a region-free Blu-ray. So you guys can watch this Blu-ray in any U.S. Blu-ray player. There's no region code locking. You don't have to have a special player or anything like that to play the Blu-ray. But the it also includes a DVD. That one is region 2 locked. So you guys have to have an all-region DVD player to play the DVD, though. But uh, in here, though, like I said, it's a really cool media book. And it has the, uh, the Blu-ray as well as the DVD of the film. Here's a look to a uh, picture here with me in the bottom so you guys can see uh, me down there 
right there. Like I said, though, one of the guys know that this was available, uh, you know, um, this release was available. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching subscribing. I'll see you guys later. Bye. But before we go, I have a little look at the most recent BAM boxes. And I'll have a link below for the BAM box if you guys are interested in finding out about them. I haven't got to show these ones for the past couple months. But I'll show you guys, though, a look at what's inside of these ones. Uh, and the one thing that's cool, too, is they have, like, variations of things. Like, variants of the pins and that kind of stuff. But in here, though, uh, the first thing is a print of um, Bill Murray from Scrooge. Which is a really cool print. I always really like that movie. And then um, there's a signed Dumbo here, Funko Pop. As well as a Kevin McAllister, uh, you know, pin here. And they also have, like I was saying, variations. So there's like different versions. Some of them are like limited to only, you know, 250. Some are limited to 99. Some are only 50. And there's also this Nakatomi Tower, uh, like badge to enter the building. And this one, I, I'm not sure what this one was from. It's something, something called Primal, but it's signed here, like a signed dinosaur. Let me know if you guys know what that is. If it's a TV show or a movie. I, I, I said, I, I don't know what that is, honestly. But it also has a, um, movie prop from Cobra Kai so it's like a Cobra Kai uh, flag thing here so that's pretty cool also has these um this Animaniacs uh, button here as well as a um a print here you know a signed print from uh, Star Wars and it says like like I said the variations of the pins here you guys can see like the different kind of pins and then here this one has in here a um Joker one so that's a really cool one for the joker and also it has this kind of like basque excess baskin city i have to look and see what this one was this is from um road sign from our favorite movies highway 287 i'm not sure what that's from is that, from, is that the name of the movie i'm not sure sometimes i don't know what these, these things are to be honest um let's see what this one is this is a uh, pr print, signed print of um, Iron Man. And this is also signed um, here from, um, you know, Cynthia in uh, Farscape here. It's like a signed autograph. And that's one thing that's really cool about these is they always have like autographs and stuff. This one has an autograph from um, Angela Jones, who is from um, uh, Pulp Fiction. And it's like a like a thing you can put together, like a bus type thing. Oh, no, not a bus, like a cab type thing you guys can put together. Also has a uh, scarf here, which says, what's this say on here? Camp Counselor, established 1935. What was that from? Is that from, um, I guess that's supposed to be kind of like, would be like from Friday the 13th or something like that. It also has a Gomez Adams pin. This is from the animated series. I always liked that series. Like, as a kid, I used to always watch that. Like, VHSs of that. And it also has, like, limited ones. Like, the Matisha Adams and Matisha Adams and the Thing one. And also here, it has a um, print of Woody Harrelson from uh, Zombieland 2. But anyway, though, guys, that was just a look here at the most recent BAM boxes here. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. I'll see you guys later. Bye.